Take a look around the District of Columbia, and you'll see there's a lot more to the local economy than the federal government. We're a thriving community of entrepreneurs, engineers, developers, and technology specialists, all working hard to create the next big thing. And one of those big things is the homegrown success of the online business, Living Social. Hi, I'm Mayor Vincent Gray, and welcome to Inside One City. Today, we're at Living Social's downtown live center for a closer look at the DC's new technology economy. Welcome to Living Social, 918 F Street, where DC comes alive. Living Social is a leader in local commerce. We send inspiration each day into people's inbox on things to do in their city. Uh, it could be a great restaurant to go to, a spa that has a terrific offer. Exciting, fun things to do to get people out from behind their screen and, and experience what's going on in D.C. and all around the world in the cities that we, that we work in. Living Social offers you a, uh, great opportunities to go and visit with local merchants, but many of them were coming to us and saying, hey, in addition to the things that we're doing, I've got a whole bunch of other ideas. We could do cooking classes together. We could, we could do pop-up restaurants together, but I don't have the space for it. Do you? And, and that then again inspired us to say, well, what if we did have that space? What if we worked on having a venue where we could, we could collaborate with great local restaurateurs, with great local chefs, and, and create different experiences. So now 918 is a venue for those types of culinary experiences. We also have other types of experience like painting and wine classes. We've got a, a barbecue and bourbon tasting experience coming up. Uh, all of it very experiential and, and it's also the type of venue where um, you as a participant become part of the entertainment. So it's a 1890s building, one of the oldest buildings in downtown DC. We uh, we are bringing together the old with the new here. Uh, you still have the original facade and the original look and feel, but then as you can see around me, we've really transformed the, the interior of the building. We're sitting now inside of a 36-person cooking kitchen, uh, which is state-of-the-art where we're running uh, our cooking classes. Uh, there are uh, four floors of uh, flexible spaces where we, we run pop-up classes, Zumba classes, yoga experiences, uh, the, the uh, bourbon tasting that I mentioned. And then downstairs, uh, we've got a, a, a below um, our first level, uh, a speakeasy bar, which is really uh, a, a beautiful space and a, and, a, and a lot of fun for people who come into the space to, to go enjoy. I'll give you the example of uh, uh, Eric Bruner Yang at Toki Underground, a, a, a great restaurant, one of the best in DC. Uh, and he was looking to do something different with us. We, we had worked with him uh, on our standard voucher program, but was looking to, to expand on that relationship. And he came in and said, well, why don't we develop a cooking class? I've, I've got ideas that I've always wanted to share with the guests that come into my restaurant. I want to inspire them to cook like I do. Let's develop a cooking class together. We did that. He had hundreds and hundreds of people come through his cooking class over many weeks. And then Eric described to us after that experience seeing people come into his restaurant, Toki Underground, in the weeks that followed his cooking classes saying, Eric, I was in your class. I couldn't wait to get to your restaurant. So there is this connection between First, the screen and get the online to offline, bringing people fr from online screen experience to the offline world here at 918, and then continuing that right into the, into the local merchants. Works. We've done similar things with Coco Sala uh, across the street, a chocolate maker where, where they had uh, chocolate making experiences and then they could go across the street and, uh, and, uh, and uh, purchase chocolates from, from Coco Sala. So it's that type of bridging uh, and, and creating connections. It's that kind of experience, that kind of platform that we wanted to create. For us, it was so important that we build a company close to local community, build it close to the community that we started in. Uh, and, and so much of what Living Social is about is local commerce. 
So we, we've we created that business here, but then we're now drawing people to DC. Uh, if, if you look at what happened to Austin with, uh, with Dell Computers and how it made Austin a technology hub, we think Living Social can be the same for DC, that it will become increasingly a technology hub based on the great talent and the technologists that are coming to town to work on this business. There are over a thousand employees now, or nearly a thousand, uh, here in DC working for Living Social. We do have something going on every day of the week. Uh, um, uh, certainly after work hours has been the peak of what we've been programming right now, so you're going to have uh, right in this room cooking classes going on tonight and you'll have some exercise classes going on across the hall and a mixology class going on downstairs uh, in our bar uh, and and the programming builds through through the weekends and into the uh, peak weekend times the impetus for getting people out from behind their screen often starts with with an email or a touch on a, on a mobile device uh, uh, th tens of thousands of people have downloaded the, the app here and uh, millions are, are members of Living Social here in DC. Uh, so it, it starts with that inspiration, it starts with a story that we want to tell about uh, a local merchant, it starts with a story that we want to tell about an experience that we've created with a local merchant in a place like 918. We get that story pulled together and we, and we then present it uh, to, to our membership and that, that's the inspiration, that's the spark they need. Uh, you know, in addition to that, we're, we're also bringing many people in, into DC with our Living Social Escapes uh, program, our, which, is a, which is a travel platform where we also inspire people every day. Sometimes it's not just about inspiring people here in DC. We want to get people from Philadelphia and from New York and Atlanta to come visit DC and, uh, and experience this place. Mayor's been a great partner for us and uh, we're looking forward to partnering with the mayor going forward as we want to continue to keep DC our home and looking forward to building a, a, a large uh, corporate center right, right down, down in DC. Currently we're in six buildings across, uh, uh, across DC but we think our future is in bringing those uh, teams together in one, under one roof uh, and the mayor is helping us to do that. Living Social's presence here has brought national visibility to the district as a growing technology hub. That's why we look forward to a long and productive partnership with them for years to come. Don't go away. Inside One City will be right back with more on DC's new technology economy. Technology is playing a crucial role in the future of the business and economic efforts in our city. Living Social is a large part of the reason why other tech companies of all shapes and sizes are flocking to the district. We not only want to see that trend continue, but see how it can help other businesses grow. Events held here at 918 F Street obviously benefit Living Social's bottom line, but how do they benefit the local businesses who participate? Let's find out. John Arroyo, we are glad to have you here. You are the chief mixologist. That's Tell a us rumor. What, what is a, mix, a mixologist? Uh, I mean, mixologist is just another way of saying, uh, you know, bartender, excellent bartender, if you will, mm -hmm. professional bartender, state of the art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of the highest level of being able to. We would like put to together. think so. Do, do you actually create drinks also? Yes. When I, you know, believe it or not, when I have the opportunity, I actually get a chance <laughs> to shake a couple here and there. Yeah. So, so tell me what's the best drink you ever created? Best, wow, that's a great question. Well, I, I think the best thing, best way to answer that is one of the most popular drinks I've created uh, for Founding Farmers Restaurant is a Cucumber Delight, mm -hmm. which uh, is pretty universal and food friendly, if you will, because it's fresh cucumber and mm -hmm. cantaloupe, and most people drink vodka, mm -hmm. it's made with vodka, so that's probably, a pr I'm pretty proud of that cocktail for its popularity and a, big a lot of smiles it's brought yeah. in people's faces. So it's in big demand? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get involved with Living Social? 
Um, that's a great question. Um, I had the opportunity of teaching Living Social's first uh, mixology class mm -hmm. in this venue. Uh, it was a great little class. Got to teach uh, folks about classic cocktails, how to make them mm -hmm. at home, and all that good stuff. So uh, it was a really good time. Had a great response, and uh, hopefully be teaching another one very soon here. How many people in your classes? Big. We, mm -hmm. we averaged uh, 35 to 40 That's students per class, mm -hmm. yeah. And how do they know to come to Living Social to be in a mixology class? Uh, Living Social advertises this. They pop it online uh -huh. to all their members saying, hey, you know, we've got uh, John Arroyo teaching this class and, you know, we love him a lot, so mm -hmm. we should come see him kind of mm -hmm. deal. And, you know, they come out and have a good time, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Living Social uh, is increasing its presence and it's exciting to see the growth. Um, why do you think it's, it's, it's important for Living Social to offer opportunities like classes in mixology? You know, it's uh, Living Social provides a great venue for connecting the community mm -hmm. of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I feel, um, you know, friends of mine now are teaching the class, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a great uh, way for people to network, you know, and for mm -hmm. more, uh, a larger demographic of people to know who you are, right. you know, and, that, and that's a great opportunity for, mm -hmm. uh, that Living Social provides. Mixologist John Arroyo, thanks for thank, being here with thank us you. today. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. You. Good to see you as well. Uh, you are uh, teaching people to cook. I mean, that's kind of simply put, but I guess that's the bottom line, right? That's exactly the bottom line, indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And uh, how many people in your class? We did about uh, six classes of 36 students. Okay. So What's your far? connection with Living Social? Um, came on board here to teach some classes. We will do also in the month of June here at Living Social a uh, pop-up brunch, uh -huh. starting uh, as a matter in a couple of days, two days to be exact. and. Um, Bring, kind of representing the new restaurant we're going to open Tabla in mm -hmm. DC here and combination and have a great exposure. Pop-up brunch, pop-up restaurant, we keep hearing this term pop-up. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? A lot of people are just not familiar with the term. Well, I think pop-up restaurant, what, why restaurateurs look to do or so, and given here what a unique location to have at Living Social, is to be able to reach out to a different, uh, diverse public that you might not have heard, heard about. Certain areas in D.C., if you have a restaurant, sometimes some people don't even have never heard about your restaurant. Mm -hmm. Coming here and have access to such a large scale, um, you know, reach out of clients and, mm -hmm. and connections, you can bend out to them and then they g get to know you. How do you benefit from being uh, connected to Living Social? I think being connected with Living Social makes that you get an outreach to a whole bunch of new clients. Mm -hmm. uh, we, for example, my class that I taught is we had a lot of young people coming in, but also much an older public that mm -hmm. wanted to do this after work or something like that, and a couple coming in. So you can reach out to different diverse people in around the city. And um, for me, in having a catering company, it's hard to you know market that c company, mm -hmm. and so having that outreach is definitely helpful. How would you how would you characterize the District of Columbia right now? I mean, you've been around for a while. You have a catering company. Uh, you've been in and out of the city. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the city right now? I think it has evolved tremendously. I've been I arrived about 11 years ago, yeah. and I think in the past eight nine years it has been amazing. The rest is, restaurant scene has exploded. I think. I think we're very lucky. A lot of international national chefs coming to DC to open mm -hmm. a restaurant. Local chefs open two, three, four restaurants. Um, and I think it's this restaurant scene has evolved. You think we're going to have more growth? I think so. Yeah, definitely. I will be helping as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we hope too that this attracts more firms like uh, Living Social, more technology firms. I mm -hmm. guess I should put it that way. Yeah. We are really working hard to try to grow our technology presence uh, in the city. Yeah. Does technology help the, uh, the, the restaurant the industry restaurant, at all? I, I think so. And at the end of the day, the more companies you get in here, it brings people from all around the, the United States, even from abroad, to the city. Yeah. And it's already such an international city with all the embassies that you have. Yeah. Well, you have a catering business. So yeah. you're not only good at what you do in terms of preparing food, but you're also running the business end of it. Yeah. How has it helped you uh, individually? Uh, it helps us a lot on the level of um, the diversity of things that we get to do. Mm -hmm. um, you can do one day an event for a multinational, and then the other day you go to a private home. Mm -hmm. And uh, all those tech companies, all those large companies that here even have legal offices, you know, mm -hmm. lobbyists and all that, it brings us um, a huge push because we don't repeat anything. 
it's always very unique. Mm -hmm. Same with here, we do something now, we do a pop-up restaurant or brunch. Mm -hmm. It's a unique menu. It's mm -hmm. very international. It's not your typical pancake brunch. It's really, you have even lamb, you know, yeah. legs and things like that going. Same here with the diversity of people that come to a cooking class. It's mm -hmm. exactly the same. It's very diverse of what you get through this building. So what's the appeal of coming to a cooking class, you know, gourmet appeal, uh, cooking? Um, it's, why, it's, why would I come? I think the reason why you come is it's something different. Instead mm -hmm. of having going for a dinner with your wife one night, you go in here, you mm -hmm. come, and you have a wonderful experience. You cook together, mm -hmm. <clears throat> or with friends, you come in here and you make it a night out in a way. You get to meet the chef, you have a cocktail or wine or beer or whatever, mm -hmm. you cook whatever the class is, and you have eaten when you go out. You, know, you had a great experience, and I think something is very easy to repeat. Frederick, thank you so much for uh, being with us. Thank you for what you do, and uh, thank you for helping make uh, you know the city continue to help the city continue to grow and be great. Yeah. And I know Living Social uh, appreciates your relationship with you. Thank you very much, Frederick. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Matt, how are you? I'm doing very well. It's delightful to be uh, here with you today. Uh, I'm really intrigued uh, by what you're doing uh, to bring. Uh, new opportunities to people here in the District of Columbia. You're teaching a, a gourmet class, right? I am. I'm teaching the Cooking with Brews class uh, right now here at Living Social. Uh, different ways that people can cook with beer, uh, use beer, pair foods with beer, and so forth. Cook with beer. Cook with beer. Not That's drink it. it. Not drink. Well, I mean, you know, cooking <laughs> with beer is not just holding a beer and drinking it while you're cooking, but yeah. actually involving it in the food while what, you're what, What's the difference that it makes? Well, People I, don't normally do that, right? No, I mean, and for a long time it was just, uh, you know, one or two types of beer that were available. With the explosion of uh, micro craft brews here in the U.S., there's lots of different ways that it can be incorporated in food. All the different flavors that come in the beers can make your uh, make your recipes that much better as well. What is a micro craft beer? Well, a micro craft beer is like the kind of, a, instead of the mass produced beers that you find uh, from uh, certain brands, you know, the ones that we're very familiar with, the nationwide brands, right. there are lots of small local beers and beer makers who are coming up with incredible, exciting, different different flavors and ideas mm -hmm. in really small batches. Uh, so, so do you go in and say, I want a six pack of Microcraft <laughs> beer, do you drink it just like you drink other beer, or is it for specific purposes like gourmet cooking? Absolutely. Most of the beers that you'll find are definitely good for drinking. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, the beer has to sort of meet that criteria if it's going to be something that you're going to enjoy. And that's the kind of thing that I tell people is the kind of beer that you should be using in your cooking is the kind of beer you enjoy drinking because you use one bottle in a recipe, you got the other five in the six pack staring right back at you. I mean, you're going to want to have to drink those. You're going to want to be able to drink those. Are more and more people getting interested in that? Absolutely. So, so tell us about some of the people that are coming in to be a part of your classes. Oh, this is the great part about uh, teaching here is what an incredible diversity of people that I've seen. A lot of my other venues where I teach, you know, the people, you know, you get one type of person that uses this facility, another type that uses that facility. But here at uh, Living Social, I've been amazed. Uh, young, old, every mm -hmm. ethnicity, every level of cooking, you know, and people, absolute novices to almost true professionals. Mm -hmm. I've seen it all here. Uh, and that's what I love about it is because mm -hmm. every class I'm presented with all sorts of different couples and people, uh, and it's just an exciting uh, t way to teach people. Can I come down and be in one of your classes? Absolutely, I would be thrilled if you would be. Okay, and I'd be very upset if you give me anything less than an A+. Plus. You will get an A+, plus, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure, and thank you. Thank for you. what you're doing. It's, it's making our city even more exciting and more diverse. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Another way that Living Social can help other companies is by bundling daily services for businesses in corridors disrupted by construction and streetscape improvements. Stay with us. Inside One City will be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Inside One City. I'm Mayor Vincent Gray. The biggest challenge facing the startup scene in most cities is how to turn a pool of promising business plans into real companies with real customers and real revenues. Well, a creative new tech accelerator in D.C. called The Fort is one piece of that puzzle. The district-based venture fund is helping get tech-based businesses off the ground by planting some early seeds. We are standing in the home of 
fortify, which is called the Fort, the Fort.vc. So we have a few brands. Fortify is the venture fund, it's kind of the umbrella. And then we have the Fort, which is our accelerator. Some people refer to these kind of places as incubators. And then we have Distilled Intelligence, which is our annual event where we give away money to startups. And it's free for startups to apply and to pitch. So that's, that's the whole Fortify brand. We had agriculture, we had manufacturing, we had industry, and we had information ages over the last couple hundred years. Now we have the in innovation age. I mean, that's what's gonna save this country, is these companies, and the jobs that they create, and the way they change the world, and so that's why we're two blocks from the White House, and that's, that's part of it anyway. Founders funding founders is kind of the motto of Fortify itself. Um, and we're not going to give money and walk away because it's really the connections that you have with people that are more valuable than even the funds. But when it works, it works really well. We've learned a lot from Silicon Valley, New York, Brazil, Europe, like other markets as to how they treat startups and have grown and evolved in their ecosystems over years. We've traveled all over the world to kind of find out what works. And what we've brought back to DC is a combination of early stage investing. So we invest in these companies. We write small checks in comparison to large VCs that write multi-million dollar checks. We write checks in the six figures and even below. Um, and we provide TLC for startup. We sit here every day with our companies and that's what's unique about what we're doing here. We help them grow their businesses. We, we're almost acting as if we're founders, but we own this much of the company. Um, so we're just trying to grow the ecosystem and help startups, basically. Um, it used to cost five million to start a company because you had to build a server room and you had to actually have all this infrastructure and the people to run it. Now, we have hosting providers where for five grand or for nothing, you can build an app, throw it out there into the wild, you know, and see what happens. So it doesn't cost that much money. We say 50K is the new 500K, or 500,000 is the new 5 million because it costs less to start a business. Fortify believes in founders funding founders. Here at the Fort, there are a lot of founders who are always helping each other, like Justin from Hinge. Yeah, so I'm Justin McLeod of, of Hinge, and uh, we're an app using the Facebook social graph to completely reinvent online dating. And the Fort has been just a huge boon for us. We found our CTO uh, through the Fort. We found Brian, our intern, through the Fort. So, uh, and beyond that, they have tons of workshops here that help me understand how to run my business. Everything from fundraising to forming a board to uh, pitching my business in front of investors. So, um, it's been a it's been a huge help. So uh, Hinge is unique because we're not like, we're not really a dating site. Other dating sites you get on, you fill out a profile and you get listed in a catalog and people search for you and it's a sort of a very unnatural process. And what we're doing is because of uh, Facebook and what Facebook enables for us, we're able to take a real world process which is just meeting through friends of friends and bring it online in a really simple, intuitive, fun way. We got a great space, we've suited it to our needs, and when people come from Silicon Valley, New York, and other places, they say, I feel like I'm in Soho in New York, I feel like I'm in the Mission, or a place in, in, the, in, in San Francisco. Or, and that's because San Francisco, New York, the Valley, whatever you want to say, is a place, but it's also a mindset. We believe it's here and it's here. So we actually want people to feel like that. When you walk in the lobby, it's blue. You know, you see blue lighting and you hear music. There's a reason for that. It's like getting onto a, a plane that has music and the lights are changing. You don't know where you're gonna go today. Startup land is a roller coaster ride. I love it. It's almost a surprise. It's no one ever knows what the fort's gonna look like or they picture it as a K Street office. Um, completely put together, everything's white and perfect all the time. So when they walk in, it's almost like a piece of the valley here in DC. And there's a positive energy here because of the people that are here. We provided a space, we provide as much TLC to our companies as we can. It's, again, it's only Fort, Fortify funded companies that are here. Um, and the founders themselves and their teammates, those companies, are what make this place so awesome. It's a community. They all help each other. I think that they get more value from one another than they would from one individual person. 
So if somebody has an idea or need help or is trying to pivot, they'll reach out and then you get this community support that happens where everyone chips in and voices their opinions, suggestions, helpful, anything. So I would say Distilled Intelligence, the annual pitch event that we have, really kind of opened us up to the community and, and it was a very welcome reception because the DC area was like a desert and entrepreneurs were thirsty, walking around with nothing. And we didn't come with an ocean full of water, we came with some buckets, but the 25 grand that we gave away, again, companies did not have to pay a dime to attend or apply. Um, that was key. There are a lot of pitch events where you've got to pay, spend a thousand, two thousand dollars, even hundreds of dollars, but these startups don't have that. So we're founders ourselves. Our tagline is founders funding founders. And Distilled Intelligence was what put us on the map to help and get the word out. It's a two-day event, and it's where we get companies to participate in the Fort Shark Accelerator. So last year it was 50 companies, and I believe 10 of the companies from Distilled Intelligence are here. Um, and this year we're having two days, so 100 companies, and that's where we'll find our next batch. One of the great things about D.C., the mayor's office, the deputy mayor and their team, uh, is they welcomed us with open arms and with their wallet and said, hey, because we're a startup also. I mean, I've had five startups, they've done well, but this is a startup. So that $100,000 grant really helped us a lot. Tech companies like Living Social and investment groups like The Fort play an important role in our local economy. Not only do they help move us closer to our goal of creating a technology hub in D.C., but the concentration of jobs, talent, and investment will lead more tech workers, entrepreneurs, and investors to choose to move here, start companies, and invest in D.C. That's it for today's Spotlight on D.C.'s new technology economy. Thanks for watching Inside One City. I'm Mayor Vincent Gray, and we'll see you next time.